The Smash Bros community has hit an all-time low. It's littered with some of the most toxic, disgusting, and asinine people on the face of the earth. There's hypocrites, liars, and even predators. Let's talk about why the Smash Bros community is so awful. One of the best things about gaming is experiencing the community. Laughing with your pals, trolling your enemies, and even making lifelong friends during the process is why a lot of us love gaming in the first place. The Smash franchise is my favorite series of all time, so when I very first started playing Smash, I was ecstatic to find out there were people all around the world that loved the game just as much as I did. There were so many Smash Bros forums and websites that I made tons of friends on. And while I did make friends, I found out how divided the community truly was with pretty much everything. I mean, with a player base as large as the Smash franchise, there's bound to be some sort of disagreements and controversies, right? But as the years went on, I soon found out how cruel, toxic, and disgusting this community truly is. First off, why do Smash players only play these two games? Look, Nintendo has released all these masterpieces and yet apparently you're a fucking idiot if you don't play either of these two games. I mean, don't get me wrong, Melee and Smash Ultimate are the most competitively viable Smash games in the series, but that shouldn't mean I can't enjoy a game of Brawl. And it's not even like Melee and Ultimate fans get along either. No, they absolutely hate each other. Melee players think Ultimate is just an inferior game because they can't wave dash and wave land. And on the opposite side, Ultimate players think Melee's gameplay is just way too fast. Before we hop into the rest of the video, I want to first preface that not everyone in the Smash community is terrible. I've met some of the most down to earth people in the Smash community, and some of the best times in my life were playing Smash with complete strangers. So take this video with a grain of salt, please. Love you. Okay, back to the video. The Smash community always finds a way to complain about pretty much anything and everything. I remember when I was a kid, other kids in my neighborhood would come over to my house and play Smash Bros. But they would always go home and complain to their stupid moms like the little bitches they were because I didn't own any fancy GameCube controllers. So they were stuck playing Smash Bros with my crusty ass Wii remotes. And the crazy thing is, that was 15 years ago. So you would think people would look at things a little differently, but nope. People still look at me a little funny even to this day when they find out that I play Smash Bros with a pro controller. I mean, don't get me wrong, the GameCube controller seems like it's perfectly crafted for Smash Bros, but it's always felt weird in my hands when playing Smash. And so what? Who cares what kind of controller I use anyways? People even complain about casuals and the way they play. Tryhards have this entire philosophy that you can only have fun on like eight stages. And don't you dare even think about playing with items on because that's an unforgivable sin. And on the flip side, a lot of casuals hate tryhards because they take the game way too seriously. And the only time they have fun is when they win. Think about it. The only reason why that guy flipped out is because the other players completely carry not because he's better than him. Yeah, I mean, even the character you choose nine times out of 10 is gonna trigger someone. Even if you main the most generic character ever, people will still claim that you're carried. Don't even think about choosing a high tier because like I said before, you're automatically carried by your character. Now, let me ask you a question. If you main a character that is low or mid tier, how does the Smash community usually react? A, give you props for using a low tiered character, B, give you tips on how to improve your character, or C, ask you to play them in Smash. If you guessed any of these, you're fucking wrong. What they really do is claim you're carried by your character even though your character sucks ass. I spent a decent amount of time in some Smash forums and I feel like every forum that talks about Pit and Dark Pit always complain about his hitboxes and how bad his disjoints are. This is a common theme within the entire community, but it isn't just with Pit. No, it's with every character. Everyone wants their character buffed while also nerfing every other character just so their stupid little dog can annihilate a fucking wrestling fire lion <laughs> yeah that makes sense on top of that most people I play with IRL fucking reek look the one and only smash tournament I've ever gone to was a super small one held in someone's garage and my God, that place stunk like hippo coochie. I mean, to acquire that kind of smell, you would literally have to go to a golden corral, collect everyone's Salisbury steak flavored farts in a jar, go home, open the jar, and bathe in the scent for 48 hours, and now you have the smell of a Smash Bros tournament participant. Congratulations, you now smell like shit. A huge topic within this toxic ass community is who should and shouldn't be added to the roster. People have always requested characters, and that's completely fine, but I've heard a few people 
people say that they wanted Clippy from Microsoft Office in the game. Yeah, this guy. This just goes to show you how dumb some people are in the Smash community. And I thought we all came to the consensus like 30 years ago that Clippy was a fucking annoying piece of shit and that we all hated him. Now all of a sudden some of you guys want him in the game? Yeah, that just makes no sense to me. But after all, the majority of the community has the IQ of a typical Louisiana citizen. <laughs> Ever since Melee, people wanted Ridley in the game. The community was getting so out of hand that Sakurai himself had to address the situation and tell us why Ridley never made an appearance in any of the Smash games at the time. He states, instead of going through a lot of very convoluted hocus pocus to make Ridley a fighter, I figured it'd be better to keep Ridley as it currently is, the correct way, and have it feel like a truly threatening presence. Eventually, Sakurai had to go back on his own words a few years later and add Ridley into Smash Ultimate. I honestly feel like the Smash community, dare I say, bullied Nintendo into adding Ridley into the game. Even when Nintendo announces a new character, if that character is not a character they want, then all hell breaks loose. If that character just so happens to be a Fire Emblem character, or a Sortie in general, the entire community freaks the fuck out, including me. And I'm not gonna lie, I get pretty annoyed when they add a bunch of Sorties because we already have a shit ton of Sword characters. But instead of getting angry at Nintendo, we should all be grateful that they even add characters in the fucking game to be begin with. Smash Bros is such a reputable series that Nintendo could drop the worst Smash Bros game ever and Smash fans would still buy it. So knowing that Nintendo is actually doing us a favor by making pretty quality content. When it comes to the competitive scene, it's well, competitive. And because it's so competitive, it can get a little hostile sometimes between the pro players. For example, Leffen, who's one of the most controversial pro players in the Smash community, has had his fair share of beef within the community. I obviously don't know him personally, but from the stories I hear, he seems like a huge douche. I know he could have very well changed, but from the looks of things, he is the same old guy. In 2013, Leffen was banned from competing in Sweden because his behavior was awful both in tournaments and online. He would make fun of players, manipulate players to hate each other, and get this, he would stalk people online. So the entire Swedish Smash scene was like, fuck this guy, and I couldn't agree more. Leffen has also butted heads with other Smash pros like Hungrybox. In 2017, Xbox was dominating in anyone and everyone using Jigglypuff, and a lot of Smash fans thought his playstyle was campy and boring, but Leffen being Leffen had to chime in on the hate as well and attempt to boost his reputation I guess, and because Leffen was so popular at the time, his opinions on Hbox made people hate Hungrybox even more. At Genesis 5, Leffen lost to Hbox twice and refused to shake hands with Hbox after, which is seen as a crime in the Smash community. He also uploaded a video explaining why he wanted Jigglypuff to be banned which is Hungrybox's main. People may have found Jigglypuff boring to watch, but they definitely didn't think that Jigglypuff was broken, so why did Leffen make the video? Leffen made the video to try to manipulate the community into disliking Hungrybox. Almost like a, hey, you guys don't like watching Jigglypuff, so you guys shouldn't like Hbox either kind of situation. There's countless instances where he is just completely out of pocket, but then again, this was years ago, so he could have very well changed. Is there any Puff players here? It's okay, we won't judge you. <laughs> If you thought this community couldn't get any worse, well, you're wrong. On July 2nd, 2020, former Smash Bros player Captain Zack tweeted a tweet that would shock the Smash Bros world forever. He tweeted, I'm tired of living a life full of lies, and just below that was a link to a twit longer. Where'd he go on to explain his sexual relationship with another pro Smash player, Nairo? He goes on to claim that he was 15 while Nairo was 20 at the time, which obviously you guys know is pretty disgusting. And on top of that, apparently Nairo paid Captain Zack money so he would keep quiet about the whole situation. Because of these claims, Nairo was banned indefinitely from any and all Smash tournaments. Eventually, Nairo responded to all the accusations in October 2020, and the public opinion shifted in his favor about the whole situation. Captain Zack would eventually be caught lying about a few things in his twit longer tweet. He twisted the wording to make it seem like Nairo paid him hush money, but in all reality, Captain Zack just asked Nairo for money for something completely irrelevant to the situation. Also in the twit longer, he claims to have initiated sexual acts, but on the other side, Nairo claims that he was woken up by Captain Zack forcing himself onto him, but Captain Zack forgets to mention that in his twit longer post, which also seemed a little sus to me. Nairo also claims that Captain Zack had blackmailed him into another sexual encounter as well. Apparently, Nairo has a 30 page document with evidence of the entire situation, which several other players, including Cosmos and Void, have confirmed to be true. On top of that, Captain 
Anzac has a reputation of flirting and using his age to tear down other players like Nairo and Ally. I personally side with Nairo in this situation, as crazy as it might sound, but as a grown man, there is no reason to be cuddled up to a 15 year old like this. Gonzalo Castro, better known as Zero, was the best Smash 4 player throughout his career. He once won 56 tournaments in a row, so that should kind of explain how fucking goaded he was throughout his career. But on July 3rd, 2020, Zero announced that he would be retiring from competition following allegations of sending sexual messages to minors when he was 19, and that he would also be ending all his sponsorships. In 2014, Zero allegedly asked Katie, a 14 year old girl at the time, to masturbate with ice and to take pictures of it. Zero later made a statement on YouTube claiming he's sorry and is seeking therapy, but I feel like this fucking douchebag is only sorry because he got caught. And as soon as all this news came out, he lost his sponsorships with Tempo Storm and Facebook. I'm gonna post a link to some more in-depth videos on exactly why these guys are so toxic in the Smash community down in the description below. Even though this community is as toxic as hell, I still love this game and I have met some of the dopest people in the community throughout the years. If you made it this far in the video, then I'm assuming you enjoyed the video, so make sure to check out my other videos. I appreciate every single one of you guys who have been showing me support. When you guys comment feedback, it really makes my day because at the end of the day, I want to make the best videos possible. I'm Pink Eye Samurai and it's been fun chilling with you guys. Until next time, peace.